Hello and welcome to another Lightboard session. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about why do you need Kubernetes and what are the key features that it offers. Now, we've spoken about enough about Docker really, and it's time to talk about Kubernetes and extend the Kuber, you know, Docker and start running it in production work you know, uh, environment. Now, talking about Docker itself, Docker offers you two things actually. Number one is a packaging format, the Docker images. So number one is the packaging format. And the second feature that Docker gives you is ability to run that, take that image and run it in a contained environment. Ability to run a process really in a contained environment is the second part. Right, it offers you both of these. Now, when you look at it really, you can run a container with Docker on one host independently. That's what you run with, that's what you do with Docker really. Now, you can extend that and start running multiple containers on the same host as long as it does not cross the boundary of that host. Uh, you can run that kind of environment with, you know, set of interconnected containers, uh, set of microservices. You can run them together with a tool called as Docker Compose, which is a very interesting tool. And both Docker and Docker Compose serve greatly and serve, you know, serve as a useful tools when you are talking about local development on one machine. Now, that is where the challenge also starts. Because in a production-like environment, in production or even a staging or a pre-production environment, you are not going to run everything on one host. In a typical data center environments, you would typically have a bunch of servers. It could be three or it could be 3,000. And let's say your data center or your cloud environment has a bunch of servers and each of this is a Docker host. Let's assume that. Now you want to run containers on these hosts and you may have like hundreds of containers to run day in and day out, especially with containers when we talk about immutable deployments, you don't go and update the existing container, but you will always for every change it could be a, you know any change that you have, any application update, any patching, anything that you do for that application or a container image, you always replace that. And when you talk about this immutable deployment, we're also talking about, oh, how do I take a batch of containers and run on a bunch of hosts? If you look at these, there are certain challenges that you would face when you have to schedule those containers in these kind of environments. The number one challenge is how do you decide which container runs where? That is the typical scheduling problem. So number one is the scheduling problem, right? The number two is, let's say, even if you manage somehow manually to run these containers on this host, how do we connect them together, the networking part? How do you network the containers together is the second challenge that you may want to, um, you may have to solve. And when we talk about running containers in a production like environment at scale, we are also talking about all these with the whole DevOps and site reliability engineering. The reliability is in the name of site reliability engineering. So how do we run our application with high reliability? is the next challenge that you would have to solve. And talking about reliability, how do we make our application infrastructure reliable? One is it has to be available when you need it. So that needs availability. You also may, and, and need to make sure that when you have more requests coming into your site, you, your application infrastructure needs to scale itself. So scalability. You also need to ensure that everything that you do has to be deployed in a secure environment. So all of these litties or the ending with T's are the non-functional requirements 
for your application in order for, for running your infrastructure in a reliable way. So you also need to think about all of these, you know, uh, all of these features. And that is exactly where Kubernetes can come in very handy. So essentially what Kubernetes is, is it takes a bunch of servers that you have in a data center or a cloud environment and creates one logical entity out of that. So instead of talking to, let's say, these many servers, you can just start talking to one single entity. That is your Kubernetes cluster. So our job becomes simpler. So no matter how many workloads we have, we just submit it to the Kubernetes and Kubernetes has its own scheduler. So the scheduling is what it does by default. So it will find the right server based on the workload that you have, based on the availability, based on the configuration of the servers and based on the scheduling constraints that you define. Second thing that it does is obviously setting up the networking. Kubernetes by itself doesn't do it, but there are many plugins available uh, which help you do that right? That's quite seamless when you talk about setup. Then it also gives you all of these non-functional requirements. It helps you meet those because when you run your application with Kubernetes, by default, it is high available. You get a HA and that also involves automatic monitoring of your, let's say, one of your pod goes down or one of your container goes down. It is replaced with another. So there is a constant monitoring for the availability. It also gives you the self-healing, automatic healing, because it monitors and replaces on its own. You also get the scalability and you can horizontally scale your infrastructure and in certain cases, you can also vertically scale it. So scaling out, scaling in, scaling up, scaling down. All of this is quite possible with Kubernetes. Uh, you also get and of, there are many features which offer you to deploy your application in a secure way. Uh, there are network policies, there are uh, firewalls that you can set on top, uh, there are image scanning mechanism for scanning your Docker images, uh, there are new things that Google is working on, for example, like Gvisor, which allow you to create an another level of isolation. You have a container, you have a kernel. In between that, it creates a sandbox. So another level of isolation that you get here. Uh, you also have RBAC policies, which help you to define the authentication, authorization. There is a concept of admission control. So basically, when you talk about taking your Docker beyond development and start running it in a production environment, everything that you need in order to run your application with reliability is what Kubernetes gives you. And that is what a role of a typical container orchestration engine is. And in addition to everything that I've talked about, it also gives you a way to run different types of application and handle it in a different way. Because you can run a state less application with, uh, there are controllers in Kubernetes, a deployment is useful for stateless application. When you have databases and stateful applications, you have a certain controller uh, to run those workloads. In addition to that, you want to run some monitoring agents across your environment. You have a controller for that. You have a controller for running cron jobs. You have a controller for running batch jobs as well. So you have different controllers for different workloads. And again, the best part about all of this is there are two, you know, two interesting things about this really is one is you get all of this out of the box. That's one. Second is it is all free, right? Because Kubernetes is an absolute open source project. Anybody can use it. Anybody can contribute to it. And that's just fantastic to have. If you had asked me, there is a software which exists like 10 years down ago, I would have been surprised, awed, and probably shocked as well. And that is what Kubernetes is for you.